five, five, four, four, three, three, two, one, one. We have ignition. Strap in. You're listening to God Stories Radio. God Stories Radio. God Stories Radio. Bringing hope and comfort through the Christian testimony. Welcome, everybody, to God Stories Radio. This is Session 56. I'm Fritz. I'm Mike. And I'm Trish. Man, Mikey, uh, there's just so much going on for GSR, I can't contain myself. I can't. It's just uh, it's kind of snowballing. It, it's snowballing, but uh, the first thing is we've been away for, like, two weeks. And I know. And couldn't wait for this Thursday night oh, to I, get I here. I couldn't wait. Yeah. Not only do we have a whale of a guest, but I just couldn't wait to get back and fellowship with you guys and mm-hmm. be back in gsr studios and the same thing was with real men they took the week off because of the holiday and everything else so there was two weeks for that too so it was oh, long, that's right yeah we took a, long, a break from the church right. as well so it was a long two weeks my goodness I'm drying up i'm drying up i need some <laughs> I need We've some water kind of been out of touch uh mike how's your week been riding the wave oh yeah oh yeah just yeah. Riding the wave, you know, just <laughs> you know, looking to God, and you know, first off, I continually ask Him, you know, to tell Him that uh, you know, you know, what your plans are in GSR. We feel GSR needs a home, you know, the radio bit, you know, uh, I want to get in here somehow and doing something with the radio thing that He told me six years ago, full time, and get out of this uh, other thing that He's where He's got me working and. That's all I'm waiting for. Amen. Well, used to be riding the wave was kind of a negative connotation, you know, just kind of an inside joke kind of thing. Yeah, but it's (laughs) it's coming around. Yeah, it is. (laughs) Riding the wave is. You're gonna have to write a book, Mikey, called "Riding the Wave." (laughs) Being that you're an online evangelist. Oh, sure. (laughs) Trish, how's your week been? It's been pretty good. It's been. I don't know. I I always say that it's going to be a great guest when I'm under attack all week, and I've been like. Ooh, it's been it's been a hef- heck of a week with my daughter and all the health stuff and that means just, it's going to be a really good show tonight mm-hmm. that's what i'm thinking so hold on to your hats folks <laughs> well you got that right speaking of which i'm not going to dally any longer oh. i'm going to turn it over to you trish let you introduce our guest and we'll do the shout outs afterwards oh great that's what i was worried about not doing uh, yeah fritz tonight we have a special guest it was interesting because I was reading about those recent botched death penalty cases. I saw something about one of the most heinous crimes in Lake County and that it involves small children. And I used to be a guardian at litem, so of course that piqued my interest. And, and I read about this story, and God spoke to me and said, reach out to this woman who is a victim in this heinous crime and see if she'll come and give her testimony and i thought really this is like i don't know like two decades ago this article that i came across so i started researching a little more and then i saw that she had turned down oprah winfrey for an interview twice and i thought really god wow (laughs) yeah so but god was like no knock and she will answer and i thought really and then i saw that she was the daughter of a pastor or something along those lines and then i saw that she had married a pastor and then i saw that she had become a pastor and i thought we might have a fleeting chance we have some church up in here (laughs) really and speaking of pastors how many we've had in the last 10 sessions yeah I know. He's just been pouring it on. Really? We're so richly blessed. I'm so happy. We have tonight, it's Pastor Dorothy from New Directions Family Worship Center out in Ocala. And I wanted to thank you so much for saying yes to us, because not everybody does. And I know, obviously, you don't always say yes. I was so shocked to hear directly from you when you called me back that day, because I saw you had um, given out statements from through spokespeople and that sort of thing and you were kind of separating yourself from that and i thought we're going to ask her to come on and 
talk about her past and it's not something she's going to want to delve back into so you know god i'm just going to put it out there so thank you for for coming out and thank you for saying yes thank you thank you for inviting me it's been 21 years now yes 21 years ago and god is still good we were preparing for a fifth Sunday fellowship at the church where I was attending 21 years ago, where my mom was the assistant pastor. Well, the night before that service, I remembered that we were all asked to bring, you know, a dish so that we could fellowship after the service and eat with one another. So I had to go to the store that night to get some ingredients that I was missing. As we were leaving the store that night and walking into the parking lot that's when I was um, approached by a young boy he had a gun and said for me to get in the car and not say a word but I had already put my daughters in the car and I was walking around the trunk so I can get in the car myself and that's when I was approached he had someone with him and my girls and I were driven down this dark road. I was asked to get out of the car after we did stop. I was um, raped by both of the boys. And then after the rape took place, I was told to go sit on the ground. And when I refused to do that, that's when he got physical. And I remember being pushed on the ground and shot in the left leg. Then I remember him coming really close to me with the gun pointed straight to my head. And at that point, I started fighting. And I'm thinking in my mind, somebody's going to get hurt. Never did I think it would lead to what it did lead to. I guess hours had passed because as far as I know, I was a goner. I I was dead as far as I knew because I didn't even know that I was still in this world. But of course, I didn't know all of the details until after the fact. God did raise me. I walked down a road looking for help. That's the only gunshot that I was aware of at that time. I didn't know where my girls were. So I'm walking, looking for help. I can specifically remember looking for a house that had an outside light because I felt like that would have been a safe haven. So when I did get to the house, I knocked on the door, told them who I was, that I had been raped and shot, and those boys still had my babies. That's all I knew at that time. Then I remember blue lights flashing. The cops came to where I was because the house where I stopped that night did call for help. So the police officers came. I don't remember telling them anything. And when I I think about how awesome God is, that even though I had no remembrance of telling the officers what I told them it had to be God because I told them what kind of car I was driving that night I gave them my mom's name and phone number all of that information that I didn't even remember telling them when I woke up in the hospital I heard my sister's voice my sister Margaret who's a nurse then I asked her if this was all a dream and Mm -hmm. she said no I said, did my babies make it? She said, no. And at that point, she said, all I did was said, mm, mm, mm. I, I didn't cry. I didn't scream out. I, I didn't do anything. But as I look back over this, I just see how God was just preserving me throughout this entire ordeal. After I found out that it wasn't a dream. I finally asked, what well, just what happened to my babies? And I was told where they were shot. Uh, they were taken out of the car after everything had happened to me. They were taken out of the car, and then they were just executed like 
animals, Mm. which was very painful. And like I share with people, even though God preserved me and he took a lot of the pain and hurt away from me, it really grieved my heart to think about how my daughters might have been terrified as it was happening because they were still in the back seat of the car. They could hear, they could see. And that hurt for a long, 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 long time. But through all of this, God is so powerful and he is so awesome that he really really will not allow us to go through anything that he's not going to carry us through so what I've learned through all of this is to just trust God even in the worst part of your life I know this would be any mother's nightmare to lose a child, let alone to lose all of your children at one time, because those girls were all I had. Oh, my goodness. Three years wow. prior so to you losing. So you were widowed with two kids. Yes. And then this. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, remind he me. He spared you, though. He spared for me for a reason, to be here. How about that? To be here, to share, Amen, Pastor to Dorothy. share, to share the goodness of the Lord. It's all God. That's what I tell people. It's it's all God. And then when you look at the Word of God, and when we pray the prayer that the Lord taught His disciples, that part that says, "Forgive us our debts, as mm-hmm. we forgive our debtors." And how could I expect to be forgiven of my wrongdoings? Mm-hmm. if I don't forgive others. So that played a, a very important part in my life. And plus, God just really took any kind of hatred, any kind of animosity. He, he took all of that away from me. And as I've often said, God performed his own surgery in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He really took all that away. I I didn't hate them. I still don't. I Forgiving them wasn't even an option. Right. Um, Because Matthew goes a little further, Matthew 15. Yes. If you don't forgive, then he won't forgive you. Exactly. Exactly. While I was in the hospital, I understand he came to visit while Margaret was there. And because Margaret didn't know him, she wouldn't let him in the room Um, but he prayed from the outside Mm. I understand he came back a second time when Margaret wasn't there and my mom was there and I believe she let him in (laughs) and it started from there he's a Christian counselor he felt as though um, he had a word for me and we finally met I believe it was in March or April of of 93 it was really it was really refreshing um, because this was a man that I'd never seen before was a stranger to say things to me that usually your loved ones would only say to try to make you feel better you know but he gave me the word of God he asked me questions like well what could you have done what could you have done and when I thought about it I was like you know I really couldn't have done anything differently because the way Pastor Brockington put it was you gave your life for them but God spared me but yes I I went through what I went through because I was told if you do what I tell you to do, nobody is going to get hurt. And I believe, you believe that. that. I believe that. 